Good evening and welcome to the Brookfield Selectmen a meeting of uh, Tuesday, November 20th, 2018. Would you like to uh, rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to entertain a motion to approve the following warrants. Okay, ratify the expense warrant. It's a debit adjustment from 10-22-18 for a minus $181.92. An expense warrant for 10-24-18 for $33.50. An expense warrant for 10-30-18 for $46,482.60. And a payroll warrant from 10-24-18 for $167,246.01. A wire warrant from 8-13-31-18 for $1.13. An expense warrant, it was an October MVX refunds for 11518 for $666.59 a payroll warrant for 11718 for $162,733.38 an expense warrant for 11618 for $285,750.40 and an expense warrant for 11318 for Thirty thousand nine hundred and seventy-four dollars and sixty-three cents. You have that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And we'd like to approve minutes from uh, other departments, cultural council from ten one eighteen, and from the ZBA from eight twenty eight eighteen, and the EMS October report. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The first thing on our agenda. Or do you want to do the announcement as far as parking? Oh, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Okay, announcement. There's a winter parking ban is in effect for November 15th to April 1st for all public ways in the town during the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. No cars, no parking on the streets, whether or not snow is predicted, and anyone in violation will receive a citation of $25 for the first offense. Does anyone else have anything to say tonight? Okay, our first thing on the agenda is a hearing for a change of location for the Central Street Package Store. And we would like to have um, you come up if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. You can sit, yeah, you can you can grab sit a chair right there. If you'd like. And if you'd like, you could introduce yourself so everybody knows who you are. I'm Lisa Boswell, um, owner at, along with my husband, Central Package Store. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we're we'll looking to move down to the old Carmelo's to just be able to expand and have a little more park in and get some more business. Good plan. Good, good plan. <laughs> yes, it is a good plan. Do we have any objections from anybody here in the room for that? I don't see anybody. So, so motion to approve. Uh, yeah, the motion to approve the I'll application. <laughs> There's no, no discussion. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. You're all set. Good job. And Thank good you. luck at your new location. Thank you very much. Get away. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you going to be expanding beyond just the uh, it's, it's kind of current offering? Yeah, we want to see what we can get the traffic. I think it's going to be overwhelming at first. Just, just getting there. Get yeah. in there. Yeah. Totally get it. And yeah. Then, yeah. We kind of talked about maybe bringing in more convenience store stuff, possibly getting a serve safe, possibly getting milk and other mixers and stuff like that. Great. And then just see where it takes us. Yeah. Good. Hope that well, works out. well, congratulations Excellent. on the new location. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next thing on our agenda is the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan presentation by Michael Kennedy and James M. Mazik. If you'd like to come up. 
can, I was just going to do a very quick introduction. Oh, oh sure, sure. Self-evaluation and transition plan. So that's with regard to the Americans with Disabilities Act. This is a plan that I know the town has been uh, looking forward to seeing for quite some time. Um, it really has been something that's been a, a guideline for communities to have for a, a couple of decades now. So I think this is it's an important step that will give the town a good roadmap for how to better comply and continue to comply with the ADA and related state statutes. Accessible to disabled residents, and uh, I know a lot of stuff to cover, so I won't uh, talk much longer. But um, I will say that this will be made available to all the town departments and to the public in the next couple of weeks. And um, with that, I'll leave it to Mike and Jim. All right, thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Mike Kennedy, and uh, yeah, just uh, thanks for uh, the opportunity to. Enable uh, Center for Living and Working and uh, uh, James M. Uh, Mazik uh, Consultant Services to uh, conduct your uh, ADA self-evaluation uh, transition plan. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we're pleased to uh, report that we're uh, substantially, uh, you, know, uh, you know, done with the actual uh, plan. And what you have before uh, you right now is a uh, outline of. Uh, of uh, what's a actually in this, uh, in the plan. And uh, the, the uh, blanks uh, will be uh, nicely uh, filled in uh, when you uh, get the opportunity to uh, look at the, uh, you know, the uh, full-blown uh, plan. That's what, about 120 pages, I uh, guess? About 25. I mean, it is complete, but we had an well, hour and a half to our meeting today, and a couple little edits here and there, and spelling typos, I'm sure. Post it might be a couple more tweaks on mm -hmm. things. So once it's all those little things com compiled and changes made, then we'll actually produce the final um, written copies. It is done. So, so, so uh, with that, uh, Jim, do you want to uh, go? Sure. I, I don't know how much how much time would you desire to spend on this. <laughs> Realistic. Oh, 15 10 minutes? 15? 10 or 15, yeah, 10 anyway. 10 or 15. Because I think it's important to get the word out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, as Mike indicated, mm -hmm. the plan itself, you know, it is very good. It's not up to And um, it actually the assessment, well. And that's what's going to be posted and available at yes, some point? Yeah, yes, yeah. It'll be done and actually it can be posted even, even in advance of making any little changes because there's only a handful of typos. Um, and I like refer to this as Center Street once versus Central Street 10 times. So. Mm. Uh, you have this in the executive summary, which was which you can have for tonight. Uh, so we, we use the oh, yeah. and, and so I kind of condense this. So um, the ADA, the ADA law was written back in 1991. Is that correct, Mike? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, I believe, passed in 1990, but it was, uh, you know, it was uh, signed in 1990, but uh, effective 1991. So the ADA, federal ADA, is actually a civil rights law, and it is uh, essentially quite equal access to all to goods and permanent services. Uh, so inclusive of those with disabilities, so that you know, and, and it's, if I want to get into a building or access a program, um, and if I'm a realtor or if I'm visually then you know, I should be able to do that along with anyone else in their circumstance or condition. Unlike 529 CMR, which is a specialized section of the state building code, which is, a, which is also dealing with um, access, but is solely related to building issues. It's not based upon um, programs and services. So that's triggered. Once you start doing construction, like you're looking to do with this building, Based on the value of the building, the amount of work, percentage, blah, 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 will trigger what you have to do for construction. Mm -hmm. The ADA basically is access, um, which might would be triggered more if there were a complaint or, or whatnot. And when you have to do new construction or just renovation, you must comply with the federal standards. 
Um, but unlike 520 and CMR, ADA has um, exemptions and variances based upon, you can do reasonable accommodations, other ways to have access to a program and service other than just a physical improvement. And we cover that in the plan, not going to, we cover that. There are some suggestions how that can be done and rather than um, it, it make certain changes. So the way the plan is laid out, and, and again, what I'll do is just I'm gonna summarize so we don't, and then if you have questions, um, on the ADA supplemental, the supplemental LH component is looking at a number of specific things. And what we did is uh, we, we conducted a survey of all your different departments um, and boards and commissions and compiled and Mike went through that, went through that and went through uh, all your existing policies, procedures that you had, and then basically compare what's required by law under Title II, which is what you're governed under by mm -hmm. ADA. So some of the key things, and I know you're going to address this, but an ADA coordinator, I know Karen's a current, but that's going to be a change. We have Karen Nord on here. But even so, we know that there isn't really any indication elsewhere on posting on the website. All, there's really nothing that addresses that, you know, she is or whoever we will be the, the ADA coordinator. So should be posting to that effect. Um, on public notice, you're supposed to have a public notice on process, either um, on training the access to program or meeting, or how one can um, go to official on a disability related issue. Um, and any kind of notice on discrimination policies and programs and procedures, none of that exists. So we basically have a sample of that, and that should be posted on the website, on Tom Hall, and that sort of thing. Um, it was, you know, Mike found it that somewhere you adopted a grievance procedure, but again, we couldn't find one anywhere. So again, we provided a sample in, in this document here, um, and again, recommendation that should be posted, you know, in Town Hall, on the website, and that sort of thing. Um, Similarly, I, I understand, or we understand your, uh, I mean, Mike went through all your job descriptions and there were certain things that were noted in terms of verbiage which should be used versus other verbiage, um, and we have that in here. Um, but also, there really wasn't anything addressing reasonable accommodations. And that was either um, um, as part of a job or even on the job. So we have in here reasonable accommodations um, policy and also reasonable accommodations form. And again, that would be something you need to look at and really should for your own protection adopt, and that's what your ADA, 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 ADA coordinator will be. Um, another part of the self bell piece is literally looking at how you maintain your facilities. And, you know, we didn't see this here because we didn't, um, because it's not, well, winter yet. But when we were in the last plan we just did, which was in town of Milford, um, we were out there in the middle of winter doing, you know, the, some of the field work. And maintenance, well, one of the things was, in a lot of places, we have a handicapped parking space at Access Isle, and then the, the curb ramp up into the, into the building, mm -hmm. into the sidewalk, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, where, where is the snow piled up? Right there on the handicapped Access Isle and on the curb ramp up into the building. That's a maintenance thing. You can't kind of do it there. Um, one thing we did find here, uh, and this is, and this, we, we saw this in almost all the schools we've been to, yep. the same thing you had here. Um, so you get your 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 handicap, you get your sink, and you get you get a guard or it's wrapped below the piping, um, and so you get your adequate knee clearance and toe clearance. But what's underneath the sink? Stuff, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you name it, it's there. Doesn't function as an accessible sink anymore. So that's amazing. Get this stuff out of there. Store it somewhere else. Um, if you have like um, uh, say a ramp that might be uh, accessing up to a stage. And a lot of times we found that people use those ramps as, again, storage for maintenance supplies, for chairs or tables. Uh, we didn't find that here, but we did find in many cases that in some of the, where there are stalls for bathrooms, um, and, so, and they need to be self-closing stalls, they no longer are self-closing. So they need to be, the door closed need to be um, maintained. The same thing with doors in most of the town buildings. The operating force for an exterior door is 15 pounds. For an interior door is five pounds. And we have devices we use to measure that. Um, and the closing speed is no more than six seconds. So in many cases, way out of whack. You know, you open a door, you know, or you try to open a door, it's like, I try to open a door and I can't open the door, I can't close. So it's really, that's a maintenance thing that needs to be, to be adjusted. Um, we looked a little bit at your website and had some comments on that, on, on how things should appear visually in text and modifications. And you know, a couple of quick things that 
you know, if someone's visually impaired, they typically, it's hard to manipulate a PDF file than in the Word doc. Mm. Last time disease is supposed to post a, a PDF file on, on, on your website, but then if I'm visually impaired, I can't manipulate that. Um, uh, and, and many times, um, the contrasts are such that they're, they're just too bland. They need to be very significant, so if I'm, if I can see the differences. And also, um, photos should really should be labeled, because if I'm visually impaired, I, I, I might have probably seen what that photo is on there, and there's no text, so I don't know what the heck it is. So if I, I need a text with that photo, then I can blow the text up and see it. So that does a common thing. So we have, yeah, it's more detailed in the report itself. Um, so on the, on the report, uh, on what really boils down to the, the gist of things, I would say, is um, the, so is the actual, you know, assessments of the, of the property. So, I mean, this building, I think it's like about 20 pages. The school's about 30 pages. Police station's only three pages. It's a new building. Um, so basically, we do it. We have a function description of the facility, a photo here, um, a general description of, of which ability or limiting of access, um, and then in, in more in more detail here mm -hmm. with that accompanying photographs and cost estimates. Now, what, the way we set it up um, is that we will identify specifically what is the obstacle in, in, in fairly detail. I mean, if it's um, like here, I'll, I'll go on the accessible route to the uh, police station. Approximately 8 to 10 feet of the accessible route to the building has a running slope of up to 7.6%, which far exceeds the maximum 5% for a walkway. So what that means? Well, for a walkway, running slope can't exceed 5%, cross slope can't exceed 2%. You can go higher, but if you go higher than that, you need to have railings on the side. Mm -hmm. So uh, one option would be to just take the existing asphalt out and relay it to comply with the 5% or less, or which is a cheap option. Or the more expensive option is install railings at a set $175 a lean feet on each side times two times 10 and you're talking it's about probably what uh, 75 350 $3,500 dollars that's pretty expensive just for a little 10 foot mm -hmm. section so those are things you would you know could cost up to this or that but those are things would have to be addressed because it doesn't meet the you know compliance requirement on, on running slow we have other areas which are we talked about you'll see here about the elementary school we have an interior ramp which is in a building up to 11 percent we have language in that about cost feasibility. That's and, and what it would mean in cost and the benefit. And, um, and we have language about that that basically it's it's almost cost prohibitive to address those small links for the cost on the inside of a building. And you'll see how the recommendation that um, how that be addressed on, in some other areas as well. So we have that detailed description of the obstacle, and then we put on the first column is the ADA site, this week, the 521 uh, CMR, excuse me, the ADA citation, the federal ADA citation, citation. So you can actually go to the, to the, the federal standards and see here, okay, 403.3, 403 oh yeah, that's exactly what it is, and this is exactly what you have to do. And we do the same course on 521 CMR. So you can go to the Mass State Building Code and see exactly. And the reason is because, um, if you were going to, if when you're doing construction, renovation, repair, or you start to make changes and, and this gets triggered, um, you have to adhere to the higher standard of the two. And unfortunately, currently, although um, you know Mike's well versed in this, the, the, the there's a proposal to substantially revamp 521 CMR. But as it stands now, there are variances between the federal and the state requirements. So we look at both. And we'll say, okay, this is the higher standard, which is what you need to adhere to. And then we'll put a very detailed description of what it is that needs to be done <coughs> specifically, whether on the closing speed, the close, the heights, the widths, the dimensions, uh, whatever it is, we'll say specifically what that is. And then we put in um, three other, four other columns following that. Um, priority, feasibility, time frame, and cost. Well, cost, you know, that's, that's what it is. It's the cost estimate. But the other three, priority, we'll do it on a scale of one to four. So the first priority would be to getting into a building or um, a, a, a approaching or an entrance. I mean, that's getting in is, is, a, is top priority. The second priority would be um, access to goods or services. Um, and that could be within a building or that could be on the outside of the building, but access to that program or service. The third would be um, 
public restroom, and then the fourth would basically anything else. So their priority is going to say, first thing is, you know, can you get in there? Second, can you access the services there? Third, is there a bathroom you can use? Fourth, everything else. And then we looked at feasibility, and the first one is it's relatively easy to do. So one of the things, like in this room, use this example that we have. So right behind Andrew, that, um, that pole or poles it is, it would be considered a protruding object because um, the chairs are there now, so that eliminates that. That's going to be very easy. So if that, let's say the chairs were in here and um, you know, people using this, that would be a protruding object. So the, the feasibility of, of addressing that would be easy because you could do it, you could do it, I could do it, Mike could do it, I could do it. Put a couple of chairs over there. Because what this is, between a height of 27 inches and 80 inches, anything more than four inches from, from a wall, from a surface, is considered a pretty protruding object. So if I'm sliding here and I have a cane, my cane is not gonna pick up that, and I'm gonna walk into it. I could hurt myself, I could just walk into whatever. So that's easy to put a chair there. Um, the second might be simply, um, it could be maintenance stuff. So let's say you have a lot, obviously, the door hardware, you have a lot of knobs. So replace them with levers. You know, your 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 maintenance person and your DPW, they could go in and change out your hardware of that sort. That's easy. Or if there's a grab grab bar that is too low or too high, you know, as long as it's blocked, go ahead and, and <coughs> the grab grab bar or whatever it might be. Um, there might be a little more complicated. Maybe the, the toilet needs to be moved or relocated, maybe the sink does. Um, that's you know, that's skilled skill labor. Or four is maybe you've got that, you gotta rebuild a whole new ramp. And you might need an architect to design it. So it gets more a little complicated. So then the other, you know, the, the third column we use is time frame, and usually say you know immediate. That's for the next two years. Um, near would be you know maybe 2001 to 2024, and the long term <coughs> 2024 to 28. So we make suggestions of what would be immediate. Pretty much you know kind of use the same thing. What's priority? Getting into a building. Um, getting to service, you know, bathroom, that sort of thing, was more priority items. So we went through every single building that was you had on your list. We went through the, um, different <coughs> rec areas. We did um, sidewalks, curb ramps, and identified in detail. Uh, and again, we spent an hour and a half, almost two hours, this afternoon, not in detail, just uh, doing a summary of each building. Um, and you have all that in here. And with recommendations on one, your policies, your procedures, um, recommended up to establishing a commission on disabilities, which would be through action of town meeting and then appointment, I believe, by the board. Um, and again, those policies and procedures, and then actually starting to peck away at the, the various, you know, items um, that would need to be to <coughs> the barriers. Mm -hmm. And like Andrew said, which is a good thing, is once you have this in place. Um, it opens up for other sources of funding where you can then get, get funds yeah, to make the improvements. So, I mean, that's a real quick, broad brush. Then uh, maybe we could spend probably five hours going over things or more, probably a whole day about each building because there's a lot of stuff here. Um, I mean, I think that, uh, just as an example, I think the elementary school alone, we probably had three, three full days of assessments, and that was about 30 hours and probably another 80 hours of write up. So, just in the schools, 120 hours of, of work. So then to explain all that stuff is, you know, we could spend a lot of time, but it's all in the report. Excellent. Right. Hey, and uh, what, uh, what's really helpful with this uh, report, I, I mean, it, uh, it actually is just a, a nice little uh, blueprint uh, for, uh, you know, making the uh, town more accessible for uh, people with disabilities. The, uh, you know, with the uh, feasibility and the uh, priorities, uh, it, you know, this, it, it just really uh, helps identify what I uh, referred to as uh, low-hanging fruit. The uh, stuff that's really, really uh, easy to address. That uh, it, it, you know, what's nice about the uh, uh, the transition plans is uh, you can just uh, check it off. Okay, done, 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 and uh, then uh, move on to the uh, bigger uh, projects. What, what I see is important is if we have this and if we have the plan and if we have mm. some folks that are minding it, we can incorporate what we need to do into things that are, I, I want to say, already in work. Mm -hmm. right? So we're, I think we're applying for some some monies to try yes. to redo portions of Central mm -hmm. Street. Right. You know, when we do that right. work, if we have this in front of us, we can say, hey, we need yeah. to take care of the curb cuts, yeah. right, and making those compliant. Oh, absolutely. That, that, that sort of thing. So yeah. if we have it in front of us, we can 
we can take care of it as we have the opportunity versus Oh, yeah, it, it's definitely uh, complementary to master plans and, yeah. uh, and, and any, uh, any other kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, planning that you're uh, considering. Right, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, timing's good too Thank because you. you can get ready for town meeting. Yeah. Yep. It's for a special town meeting or annual town meeting in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Okay. No, Does okay. anybody have any questions at all? Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for right. coming out. Thank you. Again. And for all your hard work that yes. you've done. Is the PDF of that available currently? PDF, um, Yes. Did you send it to Karen? I did. I sent it to all three of them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. I think, I think what we're going to do is give uh, Mike and Jim a chance to make the edits that we talked about. Uh, there was a, a TGPG advisory committee meeting this afternoon. Um, and once they have a chance to do that, then we'll, we'll recirculate it so that it can go to all the different department heads and the schools and to go on the website so that uh, the public can uh, make any comments as well. Great. Excellent. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you very much well, for coming Great. in. Thank you so much uh, okay. again for uh, having us and uh, giving us uh, this opportunity to uh, perform this uh, work for you. Thank you. Thank you. And that was sent out a while ago. Was it sent out a while ago? What mm -hmm. mm. if it was when we had some email bouncing? Oh, I'll check for it. Yeah. I remember Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get it. I've been having problems with the town email. But you gave me a copy of it. Right? Yeah. Thank you. All right, Karen. Yeah. Okay. Karen has one. Yeah, Karen has one too. Mr. Simpson. Yes. All right. Next on our agenda is Bill Simpson with some construction updates. Why, hello. Hi. Um, I'm Bill Simpson, representing the Town Hall Improvement Committee, and I'll put on my CDBG hat and just thank uh, Jim and Mike for the work they've been doing. Awesome. Because mm -hmm. this you. is a tremendous report that they're providing for us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just want to follow in their, their tailwinds a little bit and say that one of the things that they recommend, one of their primary recommendations is that we set up a commission on disability, yes. is that what it's called? Right. Yes. And, um, we would need to establish a group of people who can manage this, right. um, exactly. just to yes. keep track of the list, because it's it's broader than any. If, if, I, if right. we gave it to the slide menu, it would, I mean, you guys would be just overwhelmed just dealing yeah. with this. Absolutely. Never mind, never mind all the other things you have to do. Even if actually, when you break it out, like even just what applies to the town hall is is a lot for the town hall improvement committee, let alone the fact it covers what, five yeah. buildings. And yeah, it's five buildings. It's policies. It's procedures. Right. It's a lot of stuff, and um, and I think. I guess the big call out to the people in town is we would need volunteers yeah, who are right. interested and ideally passionate about <laughs> accessibility and um, and working in that area. And, and if we can find some people, looking at you people in town, um, <laughs> that would be, uh, volunteers would be much, very welcomed um, to to help push that. It would be nice to see if we get some new faces to come out to help well, along with this. Because there, there's a, it's, it's all laid out in the plan they made and it's, you know, some of it's yeah. very easy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's just making signs in some places, but there's there's a whole yeah. you know, from that to putting in an elevator, so you can <laughs> you pick your battles. But but there's, there's I think there's quite a bit we can do with that. So, so I want to thank thank uh, Jim and Mike for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, and following on to the town hall improvement committee, uh, we've been busy uh, and I'm overdue for for a report for you folks. So I apologize for not coming back sooner but the uh you've noticed that the we've had volunteer work we've mm -hmm. established a new partition yes. moved out the kitchen yeah. um for the future assessor's office um i want to uh 
especially thank uh, Al Jones and uh, Don Taft for the tremendous work they've done. Um, and uh, we had a group of volunteers that helped on a Saturday to come in and take, get that partition in. And Tintasco is doing the wiring, mm -hmm. uh, so we're getting everything set up. Soon we'll have the phones and the internet and everything's going to be ready to go. And we can start moving Al in and moving on to the next phase. So that's exciting. Um, I'll just give you a quick layout of some other things we've got going on. Uh, we've got some money in the our account for furnace maintenance and repair, so we've been trying to get a couple quotes from McDonald and Gordon Plumbing to around the uh, circulators um, that we've had some issues with last winter and uh, getting them checked out by a couple different plumbers and getting opinions. We want to have a couple quotes so we can decide how best to approach the upkeep and maintenance of those. Um, the Snow cleats, we have some money for that as well, and that's another thing we're seeking multiple quotes for. Um, we have one quote from one vendor, but we want to get our three quotes and compare them, mm -hmm. so we're working on that as well. Um, uh, as far as, we're kind of keeping track of the record storage upstairs, and I know Linda, you've been helping out with that, and mm -hmm. Brenda's been helping, and so that they have been going through the upstairs, the files that are upstairs, and, there's, and uh, uh, Paul did some cleaning mm -hmm. up there, so it's, it's starting to look a little bit better, and um, it's a big task to get that all organized, so we appreciate everyone who's been helping out with that, too. Um, we're looking at just sort of studying the fire alarms in the, in the question here. Um, we're getting feedback on that for the town hall, what our needs are. Um, Tantasco is replacing the exit lights, is that, so they're, they're doing that, too. So town, the Tantasco has been great. Um, oh, they are, they're great. Getting things done, which mm -hmm. another appreciation for the yes. the folks at Tantasqua. Um, and I think those are sort of the big items. The platform lift to get upstairs is the, we have a letter of intent from the select board that's mm -hmm. been approved and we have the contract from Garaventa. So it's signed and ready to go and now we're in the, kind of in the process of getting the vendor moving and getting our paperwork in place so we can start that. So hopefully we can get all our ducks lined up in the near future. We haven't gotten a schedule yet from the vendor, but we're, we're working on it. It's going to be a bit of a process to get all the, the paperwork sure. lined up, and then we'll, that'll move pretty quick, I think, once we've got everything in place. And I'd like to say I have a schedule for you, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, so that, I think, is the big ticket items for the Town Hall Improvement Committee. Um, do you have any questions or is there anything we can help out with? Thanks for all your work. Yeah, I have, we have, thank you, you and the committee for all the work, and it, it's nice we've had volunteers to help to get the assessor's office ready, and want to thank everybody for that too. Yeah, we've had a, a lot of a lot of great support, um, yeah. so we appreciate it. Um, thank you very much, and yeah. uh, thank you. Bill. I'm around if you need me. So. Okay, <laughs> thank you. The CDBG. Um, Andrew Willow, he said he can hang around a little while, but there are a couple of things once you sign the... Oh, we can take him out of order. Out of order. We so want to take him out of order? So have to, I saw he had cough drops, so he probably doesn't feel too good. One, so <laughs> okay, stay. we'll do, um, we'll take 9 and 10 out of order. Motion to move 9 and 10 okay. out of order. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Andrew. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I don't really have anything prepared uh, for these two items here. I was, didn't know that I would be here for them, but um, so I do. Yes. Yeah, so down. The item number nine is to sign the uh, agreement for administration of the town's FY18 community development law grant. So that's an agreement between the town and the planning commission. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about that. If, if you have any. It's in the same format as the agreement for the previous year's block grant. Right. So, right, and I, I would just a motion to approve. Please motion to just, approve. Sign. Just a follow on. Yeah, second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Let's get them on. And then item number 10, uh, again, that's just a, a monthly invoice. It's part of the mm. FY17 management agreement. Um, I have to refer to in front of me, but I'm going to try to answer any questions. And then the town accountant has to sign these, too.
Okay, that's awesome. Then I'd like a motion to sign the um, CBDG invoice that we signed. Motion to sign. Yeah. Second. And the total amount is uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, and the Aye. total amount for that is $8,025.40. Eight and all three of us have to sign this. Street, so that's part of the FY17 project that's a design engineering design project. That um, yeah. project's been essentially complete for several months now. What we're awaiting is some feedback from the Mass Department of Transportation as to whether or not the, um, the proposed drainage system on Draper Street can be tied into their existing drainage system in Route 9. I believe there's a meeting being scheduled with their um, environmental folks in the next few weeks, and after that, the, the design is. is effectively complete already so we just have to await okay. their sign off Excellent. great which will wrap up that project as you know the other part of that project has already been funded for construction right so understood that's why i was wondering yeah it's been a little drawn out but really we've been waiting for them since august so. is that anything that you can take a phone call for or um i don't think so we, we recently had a little response from them uh, they reached out to try to set up a meeting um, but I, I do know the folks in the highway department have been working with the project engineers from Lennar Engineering to try to get that scheduled. Great. Excellent. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you can get home now. Next on our agenda is the sign the first right of refusal for a Mitchell Hill property. And Al Jones will come up and he will explain that to us. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Uh, as you're aware, the special permit has been issued for solar, uh, for a solar installation mm -hmm. on Polly Teixeira's land on Mitchell Hill. Because it's in Chapter 61A, uh, which is current use agriculture, mm -hmm. the Board of Selectmen on behalf of the town have the right of first refusal. So if they decided that they wanted that land, then the uh, board would, uh, we would have to find a, a, what the value is out there and you have to pay the prevailing rates to buy that land and it would be a negotiation. So it's up to you folks whether or not uh, you want that, uh, you want to waive that on behalf of the town. Um, there is one, uh, the initial, there was two plans of land that came out. The first plan of land, when we compared it to the deed, we realized that there was uh, more acreage there than anybody knew about. So um, there's an extra 26 acres that we found for the Teixeiras that will be you know, on the tax rolls going you forward. You told me about that. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a couple of, there's a lien on the property now. We have to figure out how, what that means to the lien itself. That doesn't, that has nothing to do with this meeting here. And there'll be another lien placed after this is done on the remaining acreage that is in the chapter program. Okay. So basically the vote, Al, is that the town does not wish to take, yeah, take the property. Does, take not, the property. does not wish yeah. to offer uh, current um, <laughs> transaction for the land at that. Mm -hmm. The idea of the whole, by putting in current use, or it's chapter 61, you get a break on your mm -hmm. taxes. Now, because that's gonna roll in, now if that was just being brought out and they were just gonna leave it, in an untaxed, you know, just in a, just say, we just want to pay regular taxes on it. This wouldn't happen. But the change of use going to commercial is what triggers this. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the actual, what instigates this all to And then all the back taxes for all the years that, it, that's been in the chapter has to be paid back. Five years. Five years. Yeah, with 5%. Um, 
interest over those five years. Yep. Okay. Um, and I've worked on that. And I would, Sarah Rosenblatt is here from SWB Development. Um, I asked her to come in case anybody had any questions. Um, again, the special permit piece has already been done. Mm -hmm. This is more about the whether or not you want to uh, exercise that. Um, so what will happen is uh, if we sign off on, if you mm -hmm. folks sign off on this, that will be registered with the, because this is all land court, um, it all has to go through mm -hmm. Boston yeah. because at some point, maybe back in the 40s, there was an issue up there. So everything, nothing goes through Worcester on those parcels mm -hmm. up there. It all has to get registered yes. down in the uh, land court in Boston. Mm -hmm. um, and when Sarah went down to register the new plan of land, uh, they said we can't register a plan of land without the approval letter the saying, the board of selectmen yeah. saying that this is what indeed they want to happen. So, so that's where we are right now. The, the uh, Karen, you have a copy of that. Do you have a copy of that first? Waiver of first refusal. Right Katie Klein yeah. developed that. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, on that, it says 15.09 acres. On the original plan of land uh, that was drawn on, it said 14.68. Polly's letter to the Board of Selectmen inaccurately states that same 15.68. Mm -hmm. So oh, her I don't okay. know if you want to. If you want to sign this, do we want to wait until we have a letter? From Polly, the, we the, have a letter from Polly here. But right, I believe but the, the but wrong. The, the I believe acreage, it says that the acreage this, indicated it's not fourteen point six eight acres. Yeah, about okay. halfway through, and it should be fifteen point oh nine. So I'm not sure if you want to sign it or if you want to wait to get a letter. What Katie Klein put together right there has the fifteen point oh nine, and that's accurate. Okay. Yeah, this one is accurate. So and the plan of land that will get registered with that has fifteen point oh nine acres on it as well. So if we make the motion yeah. to proceed, the, the, the town does not wish to proceed in the act, act, acquisition of this property, then we just move forward. You can move forward with that motion. Am I correct? We well, need a signed. Yeah, we, when we you, yeah sign you make this. the motion and yeah. agree and vote yeah. on it. Right. And when yeah. it's signed by the majority of the board, then that would be filed. Katie, um, Sarah will take that. Hopefully she'll do it. Yeah, to, take it to Boston again. Yeah. Okay. And file that along with the plan of land. And now going forward, we have an accurate, because we have an inaccurate plan of land. But now. the thing is, like you were saying, do we want to wait until it says that it's 15 point? What, what, what so is, the, so, that's her so does, we so, want to, so this document matches the plan of land. Right. This is what, yeah. Okay. okay. So, it's I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable tonight voting to authorize signature of this document, provided oh, we sure. send formal notification back to. Polytech's here, and, and to, to state correct that letter. that we, correct it. that our legal documentation is is aligned with the plan yes. of land, and to validate mm -hmm. that her request, her original request, um, in, is inclusive of that 15.09 acres. Mm -hmm. I believe the discrepancy is there's an access road. And I said that needs to be part of commercial. Yeah. So initially they had just yes. said this is what we're taking. And I said if you do that, now you're you, you, taking you're a parcel of land that's landlocked. And I know that the planning board, can't do wink that. wink, doesn't like that kind of stuff. So um, so that's when I think that is the where the acreage change came right there. I, I think so long as this and our no, legal document like every, match, I don't have any problem with signing this. Um, no, and, and, and the intent is, uh, is her letter pretty clear that the intent of this is to facilitate the project that fits with the planning board? Yes. I have it right here if you want. Yeah. I don't probably make it much ado about it, but I just want to. Yeah. So in the meantime, I make the motion that the town does not wish to acquire Mitchell Hill. I'll second that. Any, any more discussion on that? Uh, I would just, like I said, I would just send her a formal notification back that what yeah. we're voting she on. Yes, to to yeah. to yes. yes. that's what I would do. Yeah. 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 Okay. Or, or a follow-on memo that states that, so that we have both letters in okay. the package. Right. Yep. Sarah, do you mind reaching out to Polly and having her? Already taken all the oh, she has. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Awesome. <laughs> Did we actually vote it? No. Yes. Oh. We, we yes. had a All in, was second. And then yeah. Then yeah. And All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, 
Uh, we have Roy Bishop negotiating a pilot on our behalf. Okay. So, so, so for I, the taxpayers, more tax land and tax taxable land. How's that? Yeah, there's Good. an additional 26 uh, acres of land that will be in the FY19 assessment. It's residual. Some of it is uh, pretty wet, yeah. um, so it doesn't have huge value, but we're getting closer to being accurate, accurate. across the board. Um, and then with the thought that a pilot at some point will be coming down the line um, and the land that is being converted over will go to commercial and that's a different rate as well so and there's a rollback mm -hmm. so yeah. okay. okay thanks Great. Al. thank you Al. okay our next one here is a resignation would mr taff like to come up i'll read the resignation it's a resignation from the water from the water board the water commissioners and we kind of hate you know to accept things like this when they come up uh, it says to the board of water commissioners for the town of brookfield i regret to inform you that as of today march 5th 2018 that i am officially submitting my notice to end my employment in the brookfield water department my last physical day will be monday december 3rd 2018 but would like to continue to take advantage of the vacation time that was put forth several months ago. Those dates were from December 4th to the 11th, 2018. The reason I am departing parting ways is a personal one, and that is I just don't have the personal passion for the position and feel the town and the department deserves someone who has the passion and drive. My luck, my time here has been wait, not wasted, hopefully, what I have accomplished has been satisfactory. I wish the department luck in finding a replacement quickly, and I thank you for the opportunity that you have given me. Uh, respectfully submitted, James Booz. He was our water superintendent. Yep. And uh, we, we like to make a motion to accept this. Yep, motion, to, motion to accept. Yeah. Second. Any discussion from any of us? Yep, and we'll have some with Don. Yep. Oh. I'll write a letter of appreciation. Yes. Yeah. So this caught us quite by surprise. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, um, Jimmy has been on the job a couple of years, done a good job. We appreciate uh, his efforts, uh, and we wish him the very best in his um, endeavors, whatever, yeah. whatever it may be. Um, with that being said, uh, with such a short notice, I want the public, the water uh, service people to understand that the commissioners are working uh, to ensure that there is proper coverage and no interruption of service. <coughs> so with that in mind, uh, the water commissioners have a position description for a water superintendent. I assume that that is acceptable if we hire or we employ a interim mm -hmm. because because of the requirements for advertising and, mm -hmm. and ex two weeks and two weeks yeah. for accepting um, applications, um, there's going to be a lapse of service. Yeah. So we're working at trying to locate uh, an individual who will okay. step in and pick up that service. So, uh, so is there any way one of our secondary operators can... Are, are adequately qualified to we're to working at whatever we can to make that happen yeah. yes okay. um, but rather than having them on as a secondary operator uh, would be my intention yeah. would be to appoint him yeah. as, as the, the interim, interim yeah. water superintendent yeah. um, and then if we if, if and when we get a new superintendent there probably should also be some overlap so that the person that's familiar with our system mm -hmm. can relay that uh, information. Uh, information along to the okay. new superintendent. Okay. So that's kind of the plan. So just a quick, quick outline. So we got the notice basically on November 12th. Um, and this, uh, by the time Jimmy leaves, so that's this 21 days there. Uh, and there's we got the notice just before our, our last uh, water commission meeting, so we drafted up, you know, the announcements. The announcements are going out in the papers. Uh, we're doing the Wisp Telegram that'll be on this coming Sunday. Uh, the Turley presses and the Stonebridge presses, all for two weeks. 
So, and then we have to wait two weeks, you know, to accept the uh, applications, mm -hmm. and then do a uh, an evaluation and a and a hire and an offer. So, and basically, I'm looking, I'm suggesting that we probably uh, would make an offer letter somewhere around uh, the 20th of December, hopefully, uh, assuming that we get some qualified applicants, and um, that would require. Um, the new hire to give notice, formal notice to yes. his yes. employer. Yes. So we're looking at the middle of January or possibly even later. Yeah. That's why I think it's important that we hire, uh, you know, an interim sure. um, superintendent. I totally uh, agree. To, to fill in and to be sure that everything is done in compliance. We've got testing, we've got sampling, uh, you know, we've got the daily checks of the system. And we have a number of things that are going on that we're working on to try to improve the system that we really don't want to have fall through the cracks at this point. Um, we're putting in a new uh, uh, chlorination system, uh, which is which is we're waiting for the approval from DEP on that. Uh, so there are any number of things that are going on that we just like to continue, be sure continuity is uh, continues on all of the efforts. So uh, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the path forward. But we're working. Um, to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, there's no interruption with any service and that all of our compliance with MassDEP is, is uh, kept up to date. Okay. So I will, uh, the Commission will certainly let you know we're, how we're doing down the road. Okay. Uh, this, like I say, this kind of caught us by surprise. Oh, yeah. I did not see this coming, but. Uh, but a lot of small towns are, there was an article in this last month's Beacon that relates to skill positions in small towns. So we, we always have to keep our eye open for the future yeah. because we know it's going to change. Well, uh, when you have mass DEP requirements and regulations and, and, and certification and training and time on the job, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it gets, the pool is very small yeah. uh, for qualified people. Particularly when you add into the fact that they have a response time. Uh, I mean, uh, people may not know, but like Jimmy's on call 24 hours yeah. a day. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, and so he has to be within the re response time. So that's pretty restrictive. Sure. Uh, so when we go out to hire somebody, we have to hire somebody that can either, if they live outside of that response yeah. time, has to move. Hopefully, there's somebody that will will have an application from somebody yes, it is. within within that response time, uh, and so that's that's where we're at. Thanks, Don. Thanks, okay. Don. Thanks. We'd like to take the vote now to accept the resignation. Oh, I thought we had. No, we had. Okay, aye. Uh, aye. Aye. A new emotion. <laughs> yeah. I was very surprised when Karen told me last week. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. Okay, now our next one is 90-day review of our grant writer facilitator. And she would like to come up, take a seat. There's no folder on that. There isn't because she's going to fudge with the information. Oh, okay. Review, All right, okay. Yes. Go for it. Go for it, Kat. Um, well, I'll just have a list of some of the things just to keep my mind clear about what's going on. Um, I've been doing a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, worked in, in submitting a couple of um, proposals. The capital grant, which I did like the first week I was in the job, we didn't receive it, but I learned a lot and made some contacts. I've been doing some interviews with people um, in the town that are writing grants. Mm -hmm. um, Cindy Thompson has been extremely helpful and really forthcoming. Um, also met with Andrew, have been working with the um, CIPC um, and some of the other communities in town. Um, Clarence and I have been working on the open space program plan. Um, I have been appointed the um, town liaison for the MVP grant. We're about to get the water mm -hmm. surveys out like next week or the week after this year, which is next week, yeah. Um, and so you know, it just keeps going on. Mm -hmm. I have a list of things that are upcoming. So been busy um just 
finished work on doing the research on the ADA, ADA mm -hmm. announcements. You have a draft yeah. that came straight from the federal toolkit. So I didn't make it up, but I just filled in the information, did the mm -hmm. research, and also um, the grievance procedure. Yeah. So now yeah. I have a town email, and so I can get that. Um, and one thing that I would really like to propose is that I work with um, finance here to develop cool. a grant policy. Um, really good not only well you know it's it's something that towns that accept state and federal mm -hmm. money um, you know we've applied for a FEMA grant I worked with the chief mm -hmm. um, chief Martel to do that um, we have things that out of necessity he's had to have under his auspices but really belong with finance yes. um, for the town's okay. sake if something if he got hit by a bus you know, we don't know where you know where the Duns number mm. and the service um, mm -hmm. area management and service award management numbers are, and all those things. So, um, and nothing. He's done a fantastic job, but we need to coordinate. And also, an acceptance and an application. Who applies? Um, we have a lot of people that are able to write grants here. They're very good at it, but we need to communicate. And it also needs to be part of the plan going forward. We have a lot of planning grants mm -hmm. out, and yeah. we have a lot of money for planning. Um, we really need to follow up with that and make sure that when the plan comes, okay, do we want to go forward with this? This is what it's going to cost. Is this a priority? So those are the kinds of things that, that I'd like to be working on, among the other things that, that we're doing. Um, it's been interesting. If I remember right, doesn't the um, town accountant hold a lot of the grants once they come through. She holds all the grants. She holds all yes. the grants, yeah. She does. She has all the contracts. Yes. And she does the billing and the invoicing. Mm -hmm. And that's so yeah. that that's happening. Yeah. She's they're doing a beautiful job. I thought so. That's but the management yeah. 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 is another um, trick. Yeah, it's trick. different. Yeah. yeah, it's a totally different beast. Oh, yeah. um, the, the management of it versus the management. Yeah, the management the man versus yeah. the financial. Which reminds me, did you get my email today? About I didn't the, read it. Okay. It's about, um, I, I've sent it to you like four times and keep bouncing back uh, to, from my chart email. For some reason, Clarence is the only one that I can No, I haven't been getting anything from you like yeah, I said. Yeah, and I sent, sent him uh, from Charter and from the other one. But um, anyways, when we were talking about the Meta 7 grant, yes. energy grant, you said you had a couple of names of contractors. Yes, I do. Because so, I can now start the bid process. Great. Now start yes. soliciting bids. So if you would just shoot me an I will, email. I will absolutely shoot you that email. Great. I thought Excellent. I had sent it to you, but if I didn't, then It I might have bounced email. back. It might so, bounce like, back. So try it to both emails and yep. see what, mm -hmm. what happens. I will do that. So, um, so technical difficulties aside. Um, do you have any other no, questions? No, you've been from the top. You've been, you've been very busy. Busy. And you've yeah. been hearing good things. Thank you. So just maybe this is a good time that we did receive a letter earlier today that talks about the open space grant mm -hmm. and that the potential for award. Mm -hmm. And there is uh, some 20% uh, or $2,000 of the grant needs to come from uh, other services. What uh, CMRPC had offered wa was to make up through DLTA district uh, mm -hmm. technical assistance funding to support the town because they had earlier committed to that. Um, so again, hopefully Kathy and I can meet with CMRPC to strike an, okay. an arrangement such that on the December 4th uh, meeting of this board we can approve that so that we can move the open space activity forward. What's important, I think, of the open space is you haven't heard a lot about the Adena site at the campground. No. We've kind of put the brakes on that because it, it simply needed to be part of the open space plan. Yes. And so as we start to think about moving forward with the open space plan, one of the th areas for management is what to do with the campground. Mm -hmm. And so I would think that they come together. In the midst of the open space and, and the like, we also have a report uh, done through the auspices of Appleseed of numbers of monuments mm -hmm. that have not necessarily been cared for well. And so that that will also be added into the open space open plan. Space. And we will also need some more management of that activity to make sure that the monuments and, and the special areas within the town are, are properly cared for. That might for. be a good candidate for some Jepson money, too. It, and that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. But, so again, yeah, I think. It's not much money, but it's. But it helps. Yeah. It it helps. Helps. Every little bit helps. So yeah. as, as we get the open space thing it's documented, mm -hmm. I really look to Kathy to, okay. to take some leadership to help us direct uh, mm -hmm. the action. 
rather than putting this thing on the shelf and let it gain dust over the next 10 years. Yeah, yeah we you actually, just can't do that. Yeah, that no, we it's actually just a do waste. No, it's a waste can't of wait. manpower and it's a waste of right. funds. And if we really need to, to implement, we really need to implement, actually make a decision whether it's going to be implemented or yeah. not. Is this feasible for us? Right. Yeah. And then, and then and the flip side is, is that is, is in order to, given how many moving parts that there are, I mean, we've, we've had some pretty good success with purpose-built committees. So if mm -hmm. once we have an open space, space plan, there should be, there yeah. should be a group. If we, if we get a group, Break them up. that way, you know, you can keep a thumb on it, but, yeah. but it leaves bandwidth for you to focus on that kind of forward-looking stuff mm -hmm. rather than getting, yeah. uh, getting too trapped up Just in one of them. Let right. me call in to mind that the uh, PARC, the open space um, grant that small towns are eligible for 100,000, that opens in, I think, early April. Yeah. So right. we can, we've got to have our ducks in a yes. row to be able to do that for the 2020 right. funding and that, cycle. And that was part of the sequence mm. of timing that we did the work last year to get yeah. ready. Mm. Now we do the open space, yeah. and then that puts us, because of the June time frame, puts us in a position for and what we want to go forward and with. In the fall, there's going to be a, you know, a capital round for um, 2020 for ADA. So those are two big ones. Oh, yeah, and, we did and that's, that. that's a quarter million dollars. Yeah. Um, which Those Andrew tells well. me won't even cover a quarter of the elevator, which absolutely blows me away. But um, <laughs> yeah, it just so. But there's a lot of other projects in the yes, town and that we need across the town, obviously right. from this. So just just from a, a standpoint of of like the the review process, I just I just wanted to share is that the folks that I've spoken with that have interacted with you have found it just like wonderful to, to work with Thank from a standpoint yes. of being very receptive uh an active listener understanding that there were a lot of people doing a lot of good things to your point that there were a lot of folks who it wasn't like their wheelhouse that have been trying very hard to do stuff but they're really happy to see you coming yes, <laughs> I know. but you know the thing is the, the things that people have accomplished right. um really by committee and yeah. by self-initiation is yeah. just it's mind-blowing yeah. it's really good yeah. we've got some major talent in this town yeah. Yeah. Really just gotta bring yeah. so I just wanted to share that oh, thank you. and, that and also I've known you yeah. I appreciate so. yeah that. I've known Kathy for many years yeah. many years yeah. We've been neighbors for almost 30 years yeah so. and she is she, she's she's very hard worker because she worked for us before and she got got some grants for us too and she 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 knows just how to get at them and she's very good at it but, and know, it's I, nice I, to have you on our team thank you it's nice to be here um I, I'm enjoying it I yeah. really am because yeah. I never know when I open my email, what's going to happen, or when the phone rings, so that's you know that's kind of it's yeah. fun and it's it's enjoyable. It's just trying to get yeah. my head wrapped around it, right? There. <laughs> um, because there's a lot, there's a lot going on yeah, that is. you have to kind of it's kind of like a Nancy Drew thing. You have to kind of figure yeah. out what's going on. Pieces. Yeah. All the pieces fit. Yeah. yeah. So um, Excellent. You know, I've appreciated it. So okay. Um, so I assume I got my fifty cent raise. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we have here presently she is being paid uh, twenty four fifty an hour, and we proposed new right now is twenty five. Motion to approve. Motion to second. Approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 So why don't we sign this one right now? Thank you. I'll catch you next week with some work. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and, yeah I, and I will promise that I will respond to your email. It's been kind of a rough week for a number of reasons. Oh, so. Hey, I get, I we've had some interesting family issues too. So. Yeah. I'll tell you when I'm not on camera. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next one. Okay. okay. The next one on our agenda is to sign um, the liquor license renewals for 2019, and I would like a motion. To motion sign. to sign the renewals. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No issues. Okay. Keep it moving. Okay. Our first one here is. And, and actually, let me just ask a quick question. I know we already voted it, but we haven't had any specific complaints about any of these entities over the course of the last year. Okay, great. Okay. First one here is the uh, renewal 
for uh, the Boswell Enterprises for the Central Street Package Store. And at the new location it's on here is at 55 South Maple Street. Our next one is for Bay Path Spirits at the corner of Maple and South Main Streets here. The next one is for the Brookfield Rod and Gun Club. And that's on a Weber Road in Brookfield. Yeah. And the next one as far as the original clam box incorporated DBA the clam box. And that's at 53 South Maple. what it is it's a one-day pouring license for one business in town and because it's a one-day pouring license and he wants 11 days mm -hmm. according to the ABCC we had to literally issue 11 one-day pouring licenses so what's the so. purpose of the 11 days well because he's mm -hmm. going to be yeah. selling that Christmas tree yes. and he wants to be able to have the brewery open and this is a oh, yeah this oh, is the oh, new oh, one we have here and drinks I'm not sure yeah this is the new one it's pouring beer and wine at the Oak Home farm because they oh, have the brewery out there not established yet. Yeah. yeah and the first date is November 23rd is this Saturday? I'm gonna have to sample. Yeah, that's from Christopher. The the, the, the uh, lumber yard one opened up, and they have a. Yeah, they, I went down there. Yes. Have you? Yes, I have. Yeah. It's, it's lovely. Actually. It, isn't it so different? You think the old <laughs> to think of the old how lumber and exactly. Like, I'd like to go out here too. Okay, and this is from Christopher Perdella. He's so yes, yeah, so motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we got. Yeah. Yeah, just keep them coming. You just keep them coming. No, they've been doing terrific work down oh, there. Yeah. To expand it. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity, I think. Mm, yeah, we want to congratulate them and give them good luck with their new business down there. Seems good to have some new business in town. Now they're planning on eventually becoming like a destination for weddings. And yes, such, that's right? what she wants to do. Yeah. yeah. She's already had a couple yeah. already, so all good.
Seems like Karen is more than nine. Eleven. <laughs> oh, there's eleven. Mm -hmm. He didn't quite make it to 12 days of Christmas. Mm. <laughs> so the first one is this Saturday. Timing's everything. So the first one over this Saturday for the new, um, for pouring for beer and wine at Oak Home Farm is uh, November 23rd, and it will be starting at from, what time was it here? It says it from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. I've known, he's another one I've known. We used to buy wood from him years ago when he was doing, he's come a long way from Babe Lawn Care to this. Yep. Yeah. He's a nice young man. Okay, then we have an appointment here. There were a couple of uh, election workers that the town clerk would like us to appoint. One is uh, Mary Maureen Moreno, and the other one is Sabrina Grillo. And I'd like a motion, motion to appoint to the two. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and our next one is uh, another special use permit for uh, Quaybog Pond, and that is from Forge Pond Bass Club. And this and would probably be good, a good time while you uh, motion to approve. Yeah. Okay. And so we want to vote that? Yes, we will vote that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then to say that uh, nobody's going to draw down, lash away for another at least another three weeks. Yeah. yeah. As we've I know. We need Face some high water. I you know that it's still Quaybog Street is still closed to residents yes. until further notice. And I hope when they draw the water down, we don't end up having problems again. Yeah. All right. Correspondence here. Yeah, that's the letter on the oh, They're holding under off on that because of our water. Oh, okay. Yeah, and under yeah. under other here, we have some wage authorizations. Oh. I'd like permit. Um, I would like to a motion to sign some wage authorizations. One is for uh, Monica Redman, our treasurer. She, um, her present salary was $28 an hour. It's gone up now to 30 Right, based on the review. Yep. Based on a review that yeah. we did today. Mo motion to approve. Second. Okay. Yeah. And our next one to approve is for our town accountant, Carrie Polakowski. Uh, her present salary was $24, and now it's gone uh, $29. So motion to approve. Motion to approve. And this is based on the Collins study? Yeah, yeah. the Collins okay. study. You don't even do a job when you gave her a raise like that? Um, we don't, we don't, uh, we're not calling for any outburst. Point of order, then. Well. That's we, outrageous. Okay. All approved. Motion approved. Motion approved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next one is for Lanny Cristera. She is going to be the treasurer clerk, and that's going to be a wage of seventeen twenty-five. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. did Kathy's. So these will have to, when we have our, Karen, if you want to hold on to these and when we have our next um, personnel, board, personnel meeting. board meeting, I'll bring these forward before then. 
Hmm? Or I can just give them to Holly. That's what I usually do. Yeah, okay. All righty. Hmm. So under other than I wonder correspondence. Okay. That you or we don't have to do that anyway because uh, Mr. Snyder just said yeah, the on the, the, thing. Yeah, that's on the lash away. That'll probably be postponed till about three weeks. At least three weeks and hopefully, hopefully. even more. Even more. The water I know. Draws down. May, may I speak to that? Sure. Um, you know, they had a. Could you come up front for the mic? John, you want to come up? The East Berkeley Board of Selectmen held a little hearing uh, about mm -hmm. the drawdown. Mm -hmm. um, there were several people from Quay Black Street. There were, um, I think there were nine people, residents from East Brookfield, Brookfield, and mm -hmm. Sturbridge, uh, all speaking on behalf of not doing the drawdown. Uh, the selectmen, the highway superintendent, and the conservation commission all agreed. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think it was very, very important that those people were there to ensure that that uh, that decision was the final outcome. Uh, the lake is still high. Uh, it was 2.9 feet over the top of the flow barrier. Uh, it's above the bottom cord of the bridge on Lake yeah. Road. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost two feet over the flood stage. So uh, it's that's a good decision. Yes, so it I, is. It's an I want to thank those people that went, took the time to go and express their concern uh, because I think it made a difference. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yes. So thank you for those people that, that went. Okay, Don, thank you. Okay, and now the next one is the apportionments from, um, from Chapter 90. And this year, they, this was from <clears throat> the governor and it said he was pleased to inform that the legislature has recently approved a supplemental budget which he filed for an additional 40 million in chapter 90 local transportation aid funding for fiscal year 2019. And what we are getting the new supplement amount is $33,556. Hallelujah. Good. Right. Is that $33,000 or $133,000? $33,000. Okay. And now this one here is from the letter from Tantasqua Engaging Youths. Uh, it said, Dear Board Members, uh, public schools were, were created with primary purpose of preparing students to participate constructively as adult citizens in our democracy. For more than a decade, school reform efforts had forced primarily on improving student achievement in reading, math, and science. However, recent development has brought educated students for civic participation and engaging back to the forefront. I write to you with the goal of civic education in mind. The true intent is to provide young people with experiences to acquire and learn the necessary skills that will prepare them to be competent and responsible citizens throughout their lives. Presently, the Tantasco School District is seeking ways to engage our youth from ages 13 to 22 in specific activities through local town government. Some ideas have come to mind are job shadowing on cons conservation projects, understanding of the function of recycling, speaking to students in class on how local bills are passed, and many more. We certainly welcome any suggestions you may have and look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and this is signed by Jody Barusa. She is the assistant superintendent, and she can be reached at barusa at tantasqua.org or by telephone at 774-241-0823. So we got to make sure the yes. copies get to Ken Cleveland yes. and yes. To George. Well, yeah, and I, I honestly probably probably wouldn't hurt to send it to a number of the different department heads. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Send them to some of the other departments if they can use use the kids for any yeah. help at all. Like town clerk you know, and so. Huh? Health. It did go to the board of health already. It bought board of health already mm -hmm. has it. Okay. All right. Now this one is on the bridge and uh, bridge ins inspection. Uh, it's a dear. This is uh, from. Attention to Herb and 
uh, Select Board is that the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, Mass Dot Highway Division, has undertaken the inventory inspection and rating of municipal bridges to assist cities and towns in complying with state and federal laws and regulations in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law 85, subsection 35. The Mass Dot Highway Division has determined the maximum load with the subject bridge may carry, safely carry based on the bridge rating prepared by Bayside Engineering dated June 1st, 2018. It is recommended that the bridge remain posted for 14 tons and change the roadway signs to single 14 tons without truck silhouettes. Please be advised. It is recommended that general maintenance be formed on a regular basis to ensure the structural adequacy and performance of the structure. And this is the uh, Quaybog Street Dunbrook Bridge. And it was signed by Alexander Bardlow, PE State Bridge Engineer. Uh, huh? uh, and yeah, Highway has a copy. All right. Okay, so yeah. their primary recommendations were just to change the signage? Yeah, so it's, yes, it's and it's clear. already been changed. Okay. I've noticed that. Okay, now is this one still on too? That's a new one we got after I already posted. That's okay, this is another one from FEMA. I'm writing to inform you of the Federal Emergency Management Agency upcoming risk mapping assessment and planning discovery meeting for the Chickabee watershed. Um, they will be November 27th, 2018 from 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the Peter Sam Town Hall, 3 South Main Street, Peter Sam, Mass. And the, there will be another one November 29th, 2018, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Ludlow Town Hall at 488 Chapin Street, Ludlow, Mass. So that's it. Do any of you have anything else to bring up this evening? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. And before we adjourn, I would like to wish every, all the residents of the town of Brookfield a very happy, happy and thankful Thanksgiving and to have a nice weekend. Thank you.